All right, guys, what is up? Welcome back to the 8th Raids videos to myself. I know it's been a bit, but I've really been trying to figure out how I can make my videos better, and I've come to the conclusion that I cannot. So we're going to come back to making these videos. I actually have been recording most of these, but uh, we're going to come back to making videos. I think we're going to make a new video series so I can actually still do what I've been doing and just stick with the commentary. Make it a little bit more basic so some people who do watch my videos who are kind of not into Aether Raids can kind of follow along a little bit to what's going on. But we can make a new series where we can just talk about all this stuff and also play other modes like Arena and stuff. Um, hopefully that will come out sometime. Hopefully when this video comes out. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna get to our first match and just go with that. So um, I've already seen it So let's get to it. There's something I actually want to try this map So we're gonna do that. All right, as you can see we're in hall or we're in vault of heaven And there's only six units and it's also an empty space here. So something probably went wrong, but it's okay It's fine. We take these um, we actually have a far save fjorm That's plus one and a far save Violet so we have double far save um, people normally don't do this because there's some weird interactions with it. So basically, if I attack Fjorm, Violet will protect Fjorm. If I attack Violet, Fjorm will protect Violet. If I attack Bramamon, Fjorm will protect because Violet's not in range. But if I attack Faye from this position, um, Faye will have to fight herself because she's being protected by too much stuff. So that's how um, double far save or double near save works. So, this is the case if you haven't seen it before. Um, as people have been trying to figure out how the hell to kill Ike, I have been as well. So I'm actually trying something very interesting here. Um, but we need to take out Fjorm first. That's uh, my goal first is to take out Fjorm. And then I'll show you what I'm trying to do. Hopefully I have this calculated correctly. We just want to take out uh, Fjorm, get that over with, and then try what I want to try. So, um, yeah. Uh, the only problem is that I might get a penalty on myself. Actually, no, I sh no, I shouldn't. Yeah, I shouldn't. All right, so the idea will be also, I guess, to look at some other stuff. We have Bramon doesn't have a seal. Uh, so this off season, uh, Faye with the seal. Faye is the only love child here. Everyone else is not loved. All right, no anyway. Uh, so let's uh, do this. That's fine. So I want to break this. I'll move here. Uh, Jerry Kimley is gonna break this and move here. I can hardly and Leon's gonna take out Fjorm as we wanted. Leon can do that pretty easily. I have faith. Thank you for everything. Because there's something I want to try. Alright, so yeah, a lot of damage. That's fine. It's Go all good. By your will. I like the sound of that. Right, reposition Thor here. And that is all I wanted to do. Alright, so, um, again, I've been trying to figure out how to deal with Ike. Um, Ike is very similar to Duo Violet in terms of like being able to be vulnerable to Fatal Smoke, being vulnerable to Miracle Effects. So I'm actually trying Miracle on Legendary Camilla. <laughs> she has Miracle. Um, so I have the... Marth Ring, we have the Slaying on her weapon, and we also have Quick Impulse, and we have Garrick. So she basically gets four charge already. Um, so Violet does have the Scowl effect, but since we have they Thor, we can submit. basically get back to Miracle already. Yeah. So that's the idea here. So it's actually going to be pretty funny, although it looks like my Kimmela can kill Violet maybe already. And not take any damage, which kind of sucks. Basically the idea is if I couldn't kill Violet, I'll survive with one HP. And then I will be able to, you know, just do more damage. And just to have pre-combat damage, at least I'll do some damage. This is the idea I had in terms of dealing with Ike. One of the ideas, not the only idea, but one of the ideas. So basically, that's what I want to do. But Camilla does too much damage here, so looks like it. Yep, a little bit too much. Guess she doesn't know her own strength. All right, so let's. Uh, remove some of this stuff over here. Uh, Leon. Yes. All right. Uh, I actually know what I want to do. I guess we could just take out Bramamon now. We could just do that. And hopefully, I won't hit my mic when I do that. But do um, can. so let's do this. For the I think we can just take out Bramamon. Ivy. 
Ivy's been very good. If this was like a week ago, I would probably say that Ivy's probably the best unit we've gotten this entire year. Not just because it's Ivy, but because I think Ivy is really good. She can take out pretty much all of the main sort of meta tanks right now, and also very good fodder, um, a tune unit, just everything good about Ivy. Got a plan. But now, <laughs> people are like, what about Ike? And yeah, very much so, what about Ike? Um, I guess a lot of people have been saying, you know, just throw AoE on him, it's pretty easy, but um, I think there's scenarios where it's not really that simple. Exactly. I've been pl practicing, or not practicing, well, I guess practicing, yes, all day with it, and yeah, it is not very fun trying to figure out how to deal with Ike in certain situations. But again, that will be part of the next video that I hopefully will be doing at the same time. Anyway, we're just sort of clearing on these units now. Um, Faye does have that miracle effect on her, but we have miracles as well, so we're a copycat. We're fine. Um, Leon can probably take out this. They don't have any warping of any kind. Yes, they do not. Always got to be careful. You don't want to make these mistakes and then uh, cry like I do. You want you don't want to cry like me. Don't do that. So be careful. I make mistakes a lot, so trying to go slow. All right, so let's see. Um, I want that pot though. Where was that? So be it. Um. Uh, okay, I guess I. Okay, I know what I could do. So Ivy's gonna take out Faye. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Yes, Ivy's taking out Faye in the video game." Finally, the game's over. No, it's not over yet. All right. Um, uh, we're just gonna hit this. It's fine. I just want to be able to move right at Taskar here, so we can get this pot here, and then. Don't worry, Legendary dear. Camilla take out so this exactly <laughs> 31 pre-combat damage get her 1 yeah. HP and Legendary Camilla gets the job done good job Legendary Camilla you didn't even need a damage special you just needed a damage pre-combat thing <laughs> alright pretty good that's our first match Shameless. we have another 6 one we have a safe defense so that's all we have to really be concerned about so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reposition oh, Earthies um, she does have the the uh, Marth Ring and the Quicken Pulse and Garrick helping out, so she's at uh, the one charge already. Okay, anyway, so we should be fine. Alright, so Thor is going to reposition Nerthuse here. It's gonna, yeah, I know this is gonna go off, that's fine. Uh, we just want to take out Hinoka so they don't have the three movement charge. Nerthuse is gonna get her Gale Force because she has. Uh, Yep, just gonna get that. And I think I wanna take out Golveg here. Again, they're mostly all gravitied. Um, only Plumera is gonna be not gravitied. But as long as we can take out Lysithia, or take out uh, Golveg here, we got the Kanto 2 back. Okay, just making sure. Is it accurate? Why does she not have gravity debuff? It's only on the first hit. Let me see. Oh, okay, that might be something that's interesting. It only puts gravity on. Only puts gravity on if she has. Above 25% HP. Okay, so that's actually something that's very n uh, something important to note. Uh, so that means we definitely have to take out Lysithia now. But could Claude reach? Okay, I don't think Claude can reach. Okay, so we have an exit plan here. We still do. Um. <coughs> yeah, we still have an exit plan. I've hopefully Close calculated this correctly. Or Plumera can just do it. You know what, Plumera? You should you should uh, do something. <clears throat> Sorry, my uh my throat was not uh a little bit weird when I say Plumera, my throat was just getting a little bit weird. Right, anyway, we're fine. Uh all right, so I think we're fine at the moment. May I? I'm just gonna break this here. 
And I think we should be like safe. Here I can just break this. Alright, because we have our safety fence, we're safe. <laughs> get it! Don't get it? Okay, fine. You don't have to get it. Alright, so we're gonna reposition Arthus again. Uh, we can't take out Claude yet. That's totally fine. Totally fine, because we can get our Gil for still. You want. We'll take out Claude with this hit. Alright. Claude is now taken out. Our is going to be able to move back. Exactly. Alright, now we need something to kill Byleth. I didn't actually even think about or consider that. Um, there might be actually a scenario where oh, we might be in it. trouble. But we should be able to, um... Oh, he has the Ike thing. Oh. Oh. That's actually not good. Oh. He actually does have the Ike what thing. Is it? May I? Alright, that might be a very big problem. That might be a very big problem. We will abide. Alright, uh, we will see. Alright, so we took out that. Yeah, uh, that's fine. I'm just gonna do this. Oh, I see. Alright. Alright. What is it? Better be alright. I don't know why I broke that. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little bit weird. But we will see. I'm assuming Legendary Camilla will be the one that's gonna have to do the heavy lifting here. Oh, this is fake because we know that already. Close your eyes. Yeah, this is uh, gonna be... Alright, good. We have enough damage for Violet. Alright, perfect. Oh wait, we need to get this pot. All right, and we should exactly. be good. We now have the miracle effect on this build, so. Yeah. And let's see how much that was. 24, okay. So by six. But it'll still get enough, so. That's all that matters. All right. All right, welcome back, guys. We're now gonna be looking at the defense portion. We have two different kinds of maps. There are kind of variations of maps we've done before, but they're a lot better. At least one of them is significantly better, so we're going to see that. Um, let's actually see that first. As you can tell, we've been winning. I personally think it's a lot easier to build defenses for Astra Anima than it is for Light and Dark because Freyr is way too good. So let's see our defense. So this is our very, very strong map. This is probably the best map I've ever done for defense, and I'll explain everything that's going on. I know a lot of people are not happy that it's Thor week and Demo week, but those are two units that I actually still both use, and for good reason. Anyway, so what we have here is we have on columns 3 and 4, we have Catapult and we have Duma. Um, this will destroy any buildings here, but since Duma basically with his refine picks the building that's the closest, he'll destroy both of these by himself. Now, the reason why I use uh, Duma with Freyr is because, again, you can stop pole towers and stuff which are which is very strong in astra anima because there is no medius here which is maybe why people like astra anima i think i saw like a poll that they did on reddit where most people preferred chaos season the most and then they liked astra anima and then they liked light and dark the least i i'm more of i like chaos and then light and dark than <laughs> astra anima but um that's just me but anyway the point is we use freer because of the threat of Elamine. Elamine used to be like, I guess, the most important mythic, but now I guess it's still Freyr. I mean, that's just my personal uh, belief, at least for the defensive defensive ones. And the reason why is because Freyr cleanses at start of turn debuffs, and that includes Elamines. So that means Zuma pretty much is unchecked when it comes to being able to destroy buildings, and that's why I want to destroy 3 and 4, because that's usually where bolt towers are or safety fences are. If you have a safety fence that's like in 1 or 2 or 5 and 6, it doesn't really cover all the spaces, so there's still a chance for you to get initiated on if you don't space out, so that's basically the purpose of it. But now, 
now that we uh, mentioned the mythics, let's actually talk about the other characters in here that's making this all work. So, I summoned for Chloe because I wanted to fodder Hinoka for Wings of Mercy 4 because I've been using it a lot everywhere and because she's not a legendary or mythic so you can use this pretty much for every season. She's going to be my defensive mythic pretty much for at least all the seasons now because I can just swap between them. Now, um, I have pass on Chloe, I have pass on Thor, and I have pass on Camilla. Camilla has a very good B skill, so I mean that's kind of questionable. Thor really doesn't have anything to use, and Chloe, same kind of thing. The reason why I have pass is so that you can be able to pass through characters like Gatekeeper. Um, we don't need it for our Gatekeeper, obviously it doesn't work against us, but enemy Gatekeepers or enemy Murs, which we have here, their warp bubble or their, what is it called, detail report, it does not work because pass allows them to go by. So that means on turn one, if they have um, the safety fence here, it gets destroyed and we have three movement on pretty much all five units here. So that means they have a lot of threat range and there's not many places to hide. Um, Gatekeeper is the bonus unit, so Gatekeeper will not move, although he does have three movement as well, but he won't move because he's there. Anyway, so Chloe is going to give three movement to everyone. She's the most important person here to protect and Gatekeeper because they do the most important things. Gatekeeper is here basically to protect against Edelgard. Edelgard ruins this map and also Brave Gulveg ruins this map. Those are, I guess, the two, I guess, most common units that can destroy this map. But Gatekeeper is here to, the, to stop the Edelgard stuff. So you cannot warp in these areas. Um, oh, within four spaces, blah, blah, blah. So that basically stops all the Edelgard stuff. So Edelgard can't get, like, you know, repositioned by... Or, um, can't get repositioned by Yunaka and then just, um, sort of warp on Camilla. Can't do that because of Gatekeeper here. Um, if Edelgard had passed, yeah, but then you, you have to get rid of your Raging Tempest, which, um, Edelgard's definitely not going to do, so... <laughs> Um, anyway, that's the point of Gatekeeper. Um, I actually wanted to do the close bonus that but I didn't summon the guy, and so we didn't do that. But anyway, Gatekeeper has that, Chloe has that, and we have Thor. Thor is, has Blazing Flame, so she does AoE in a line, um, which is really good. She has Defense for his ploy, Quick and Pulse, uh, so she get her AoE on turn one, and also we have the Soaring Echo. As you, I use her for Arena, so that's why I kind of have that for that. And um, Thor's uh, kind of peripheral C skill is actually not that great. Um, it kind of depends on your team, but usually for me, it's just not useful at all. So usually I always use a defense rest ploy. Now, um, Thor is probably actually one of the best units we've had that's aged. The, Of course, Loki and uh, Thor age very well, <laughs> as you can see. But they've aged probably one of the best, you know, even though it's been like almost two years that they've been out. They're still extremely good in a lot of modes. They're not the best unit by any means, but they're still extremely good in a lot of modes. And in particular, why I like Thor a lot is because she has very high res, which is very important against a lot of characters. HP and res are like really important stats nowadays. I mean, speed's always been important, but HP and res is sort of uh, emerged. HP mostly because of the pre-combat damage and res just because a lot of skills are tied to res. So she's very good with that. And sorry, I just had to look at them for a little bit. I know I made a new YouTube, so I'll be on my best behavior on this one. But yeah, just had to mention that. But anyway, that's the point of it. And as you'll see when this plays out is actually Thor, because she has so much res, she actually bypasses Mers res, which means Mers doesn't get her 40% normal damage reduction against AoE. So it doesn't even work on Thor because she has so much res, which will normally work against like Brave Gulveg. I also think she beats the res check on Vale as well. So again, that's why Thor is extremely good and I'm happy that I <laughs> willed her, not even just because of uh, um, she's strong, but just because I liked uh, the art. So anyway, we got that. We've already talked about these three, so let's talk about Legendary Camilla. Pre-combat damage, Fatal Smoke 4. As you can tell, um, I've been really um, key on a lot of skills, like Mystic Boost on Camilla. Uh, Ninja Camilla, that is. Um, I always talk about Swearing Guys because I use a lot of flyers. And Fatal Smoke 4. It's very good because it stops miracle effects, and now it stops healing. I mean, it always stopped healing, but that's not really why I got it, which is kind of weird. But now, since we have Ike that heals a lot, Tita that heals a lot, um, Dual Bios that heals, this will help. Especially if you have overlapping characters. So if you have one character damage once, they can do Fatal Smoke, pre-combat damage, that damage will stick, and that last person has a really good chance of taking out that unit. So that's why we have Ninja Camilla with, or not Ninja Camilla, Ninja Camilla with this. She also has an Echo skill, um, 
to whatever. Because again, she's not using her B skills, so she can use Echo skills. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then Ivy here, um, just very strong. She also is very good because she doesn't need Chloe to give the three movement because she has her own three movement. So that's also very good. And that's the point of my map. Uh, sorry, to, it's very lengthy explanation, but I just wanted to talk a little bit. This is the first sort of match of the week with this map. We won't have to go through this anymore. But anyway, you can kind of see how it plays out now. Um, again, they don't really have much room to move. So I guess I don't know what they're trying to do. Again, no warp bubble, so it's not going to work because we have pass of three units. And pa and it doesn't even work on uh, Ivy anyway because she has her three movement by herself. So you see the AoE. See, so it did 74 damage to Murr. When normally Murr has good um, damage reduction against AoE just because, again, Thor can beat that res check. And then you see Chloe. Um, can take out Eliwood. That's not really a problem for Chloe. Um, and then everyone else is not in range, but they kind of move in. And for now, this is the only map that we've seen with that. So, um, the, the other two replays are from the other map. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of switching them around a little bit. So now we have to talk about this one. I'm sorry, a lot of talking, but, uh, we'll get through it eventually. Um, did I actually talk about the unit enemy team? I didn't even talk about it, but you kind of saw, I think. Let's talk about it first, so I don't forget. Um, Eliwood. It's funny, because I saw Eliwood twice on both replays, so I was like, oh, I'm going to put Eliwood on my team, and I did for one of them. Uh, we have Ratataskar. We have Duo Violet. We have Hortensia, which I have not refined her weapon yet. Please remind me to do that. Sita, who tanked my map last week, but will she this time? And then we have Sather. All right, so our new map. Um, I haven't shown it yet. But Surtur can tank Winter Edelgard. He can do it. I have now seen it twice last week, so it is possible. And he can do it from turn one. He doesn't even need his defensive special, so that's amazing. That worked out just fine. He is plus five. Um, Corn, Hardy Fighter. I like her on defense more than Violet because she has the Divine Vein Stone, which can protect against AoE. So that's why I like Corn. She can't really fight back against Leon and you know some other stuff, but I actually prefer that. Um, Duma again, Duma combo 3-4, take out bull towers, that's good, unless if they kill Duma now. We have Freyr, he's still very useful, and then the bulk of the damage is from Camilla and Thor. So Camilla has pre-combat damage, no pass this time because she's in range, and she doesn't want to go off anyway. Still Fatal Smoke and still Hardy Bearing. You need one Hardy Bearing on your team, most likely just in case if you run into like a Winter Dimitri for example. And then just Ruptured Sky this time. Um, I'd actually not. She had Ruptured Sky on the other map too. Uh, we have Thor who has pass. She needs to pass. Um, she actually has rally attack speed. She's going to actually do a rally trap. So she's going to. Um, she's going to rally Camilla. Plumera is going to dance Thor. And then both of them are going to be pretty much close to the same range. And then we have uh, Defense Res Ployner. Because again high res. And blah blah blah. And we have Blazing Light this time instead of Blazing Flame. So. Different um, areas of effect for the AoE. Now, Plumera is here with Firestorm Dance 3. Doesn't really matter too much. Just, you know, just can give a, a buff, so that's fine. Guidance 4 can help Corn warp in, but again, doesn't really matter too much. And Air Orders. That's very important. We need the Air Orders so that Thor can basically um, go to Camilla. We don't want Soaring Guidance on Plumera because we don't want people flying out here and just going completely off from the entire team so we want them to be a little bit contained a little bit so that's the purpose of it and yeah that's how this map goes so you kind of see how it plays out we're gonna see this map twice um, I know people are like oh bro who cares about this let's see Ike Ike's in the next replay so don't worry about it he's also in a replay from last week I don't know if I can show that but he was also there too all right so again we destroy some stuff Some people also may be wondering who would I use if it's not Water Season with Legendary Camilla. I do have Zephyr, which pretty much has the exact same build with the pre-combat um, Red Tome. So, anyway. So, we're going to see what's going to happen here. Uh, Thor is going to, again, rally Camilla. And then Plumera is going to dance this Thor. Thor is going to have a little bit more movement than Camilla, but it's fine. She has Thorin Guinan, so Camilla can catch up. It's going to take out Byleth. She's been doing that a lot today. Up. 
All right, maybe pre combat damage is okay. Maybe that's why people are, are happy for Ike, even though Ike is OP. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe pre -com pre combat damage too much. Anyway, Thor takes out Elliewood. Face the future. And then, okay, so that's where we're at right now. Again, we have Fatal Smoke on. So that means when Hortensia heals Sita, it heals for a great big zero. It is for movement though, so that's fine. Um, they don't have, I guess, much to do here. Um, Lunar is going to dance Surtur. Who would have thought that I would go back to Surtur? I use a lot of Winter Surtur for the raids, but never uh, the original Surtur. This is the first time, really. Or first instance. Alright, 69 damage from Camilla on Sather. Oh, so that's all you only wanted? What? Alright, another AoE special. It's not Blazing Flame, so it doesn't hit Sita, but that's fine. Alright, and then Freyr is going to attack Ratataskar. 52 damage becomes, I believe it's 22, right? Yep. So, doesn't kill. Alright, and that's where we're at right now. Alright, Thor's not protected by anyone. Camilla's protected by Surtur, but not Corrin. So Thor is going to take the hit. And then Camilla wants a piece of Sita. I'll make this hurt. Forgive me. All right. And then Freya can take out Rata Taskar and that's where we end with this one. So we have one more replay. So let's look at this one. This one has your Ike. You've been waiting for it. Alright, so we have Sather, Wings of Mercy. We have Thor, Wings of Mercy, Gale Force. That's what I do. We have Wings of Mercy 4. We have Hathor. We have the new Ike. This person is choosing to use Defense Res Form 3. We have Fall Maria, which will add a miracle effect if it weren't for the Fatal Smoke 4, of course. And we also have Plumera, plus 1. Also, are you guys going for your Dividing Codes path first? I'm actually going for the Fatal Smoke path. That's actually what I'm doing. I like my fatal smoke, I'm sorry. Alright, anyway, so let's do some damage, lockout. Alright, Ike. Gonna get some buffs on, I'm gonna move back. I'm gonna tank a little bit. Alright, so let's see what happens. Again, Freyr can cleanse anything off, so we can get this rally for sure, and then dance. So let's see, Ike. All right, and then we got an AOE on Ike, which is 79, so that's enough. Um, all right, so we'll have damage this time for Ike, but I'm actually going to show something. I'll show you something. Actually, maybe I can explain it here. Well, that's fine. We took So, so we took out Maria, that's fine. But there's something that um, I've seen online. I've seen it a couple times. We'll talk about it in the other video that hopefully I keep hyping up that I hopefully I do. But if you notice, there's one mythic, there's two mythic, there's three mythics, and there's four mythics on this team. Um, so what people have been doing, again, we'll, hopefully this will go over in this other video. Um, someone talked about it, and I've been practicing against this map in particular about it. It's CMA. We've actually practiced against this map before. He's right here on the top. So um, there's something that's interesting that people are doing. So what people are doing with this Ike, uh, some of the sentiments when the Abyssal map came out was people were saying, Oh bro, it's just an Abyssal, don't worry about it. Just AoE him, it's so easy, bro. Ike is not even strong, wink wink. But what people are doing, is, is since on Light and Darks and Astra Anima, each myth that gives you 5 HP when you add them, it's, you can see the buff, and then some other buff. People are just putting a bunch of mythics with them. So normally this like would probably have, what, 58 HP? Now he has 78, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mythics with them. So um, doing AoE to this Ike is going to be very hard. See, my AoE, he has... See, look at this. He's very tanky. So that's what people have been doing. I've seen... Someone last week do it. I person on offense had four mythics. Um, again, I'm not sure score wise if it's better or not to have this many mythics, but people are just banking on the fact that Ike, this is the 
way to make him the strongest. So people have been doing this. So that's something to note. Um, I've actually was struggling with this map, but actually did find a way to beat it. Um, again, we'll put this in this other video though, but just letting you know that's what people have been doing with Ike. And um, yeah, so. Again, I did see this before. Um, Asher, who also does 8th Rage videos, he ran against, ran into this with a ninja, was it Shirche? Who did kind of the same thing. It was way, I don't know how long ago, a couple months ago, um, where you just kind of stack a bunch of mythics and just have one super duper HP tank just kind of be unkillable. So this has been done before, but essentially that that's where we're at. But I anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it's been interesting. And yeah, hopefully you can make this video and just kind of talk about just some random stuff with face. So have a good one guys. Good luck with your matches and um, I don't know. Later.